Today I wanted to make a quick video highlighting a really interesting program called Termonad. Termonad is a terminal emulator that is configurable in the Haskell programming language. If we just go to their GitHub page, you can see Termonad it is a terminal emulator configurable in Haskell. They've got some screenshots and they got some information, of course, about how to get Termonad installed on your system. Basically, what you need to do is you need to do a git clone of this repository, cd into the cloned repository, and then do a stack install once you've cd'd into that directory. Pretty simple, that should work on every Linux distribution, so you don't have to worry about you know what system you're running as far as what Linux distribution, because stack is distro agnostic, it is basically a uh, Haskell package manager. Now one thing you need to know, the installation method with the git clone and then running stack install, you know, it's got to compile everything. And the compilation time takes a while. It took me probably 20 minutes on my system, and I have a 12 core Threadripper. It took me about 20 minutes to compile Termonad. So those of you maybe that have weaker CPUs, that the compilation times could get a little long. And once you have it installed, uh, you can run it by simply typing Termonad, if I can type correctly here. There it is. Now, Termonad, when you install it with the git clone and then the stack install, I, I believe it places it in dot local slash bin slash Termonad. It's where that binary is going to be on the system. So make sure you have dot local slash bin as part of your path. Otherwise, to launch Termonad, you're going to actually have to type the full path instead of just Termonad. But you can see, if I do an ls, I mean, it looks like any other terminal emulator I happen to run. I, I use the same font and color scheme here. I'll show you about the configuration in just a second. But some of the really interesting stuff is some of the things I've done in the past were, you know, my emoji test that I did on a video a while back where I basically cat out this file, or this time I'm going to pipe it through less. And you guys see this here. This is... Pretty good. I mean, that's colored emoji. Uh, it, yeah, it passes the colored emoji test with flying colors. Now, uh, we also should check for good Unicode support. So I'm going to curl a web page here. This particular website that I'm curling, this web page, is simply a plain text file that has a bunch of different Unicode characters. All right. And it pulled that page down. And looking at the various symbols, the Braille looks good. The runes look good, Ethiopian, Thai, Russian, Georgian, Greek, it all looks good. All the math and science symbols also pass that with flying colors. Uh, let me clear the screen. The next thing I'm going to do uh, is some of you may be wondering about the speed. Now, this is not a scientific test or anything, but if I time a tree on root, let's run tree on root and see how long it takes. When I did this with alacrity, Alacrity did a tree on root on my system that took about 11 or 12 seconds, I believe. Um, URXVT and ST were similar. Xterm was quite a bit slower. All right. And this takes uh, right at 20 seconds, basically. You see real time. It's 19.9 seconds. Not terribly slow, though. I mean, that, that's still pretty fast. I mean, that's hundreds of thousands of files you know, it had to go through on the system. Does it actually tell me how many files? Actually, more than hundreds of thousands. My system is very bloated. I have 1.2 million files on the system right now. So I mentioned Termonad is configurable in Haskell. So basically what you need to do is you need a config file. It doesn't install like a default config file for you or an example config. What you need to do is on the GitHub page, the main GitHub page, somewhere here, uh, right here, configuring Termonad, and then they have this document here. That is your Termonad.hs. You need to place that in .config slash Termonad slash termonad.hs. So if I go back to the desktop here, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Now, built in the uh, key bindings are, I believe, control plus for zooming in. Yeah, and control minus, of course, would zoom back out. Those are kind of standard terminal key bindings for zoom in and zoom out. Now, if I open the config file, so I'm going to open .config slash termonad slash termonad.hs. And I opened this in Kakoon, the Kakoon editor, and it's complaining that this particular file 
has been edited in a, a different editor since the last time I played with it. I think I opened this file in Vim earlier <laughs> and made a minor edit, but it's still loaded in the buffer here in Kakoon. So I'm going to tell Kakoon to reload. Okay. And basically what I did is I took it. They've got some example configs on the GitHub. And I, I grabbed one of the example configs, and it was using this solarized color scheme, but I modified the colors. These colors are actually not solarized. They're, they're the color scheme that I've, I've been using, which is uh, not quite Dracula. It was originally based on Dracula, but I mo modified the colors a little bit to my liking. So I, I often tell you guys I, I use the Dracula color scheme. It's actually slightly different than the default Dracula. So I'm setting the foreground color, the background color, cursor color, and then of course the 16 terminal colors, same, you know, 16 colors you would set in something like the X resources file for those of you that are used to configuring that for X term or URXVT. And you know, it's, it's Haskell. So you're, you're creating functions in Haskell. And then of course at the end, you're piping all these functions. So basically you're doing this main equals do, and <laughs> that's where all the magic happens. Now, because Haskell is a compiled language. You can't just edit this file and those changes take effect. You do have to recompile the program and how you do that. Now, Termoned, when you run it, it may recognize that you changed the config and try to recompile itself. At least in the documentation, it says it might do that. Uh, for me, though, what I have to do is I have to specify, I think I have to do stack and then exec for execute, of course, and then space dash dash space and then the command we want to run which in my case would be termonad and if i had made any changes to termonad since the last time i had run it it would recompile so anyway not not much to see here i mean if you've seen one terminal emulator you've seen them all it's uh fast it seems light it renders unicode and emojis well uh it, it's actually a pretty cool project so i thought i would highlight it a little bit on the channel because i'd never heard of it until a couple of days ago actually one of the viewers of the channel said hey you know you've been living in xmonad and playing with haskell you want to try out a terminal emulator that's uh, configured in haskell and hey why not now, you guys that are running ter other terminal emulators, maybe you're running ST or Alacrity or URXVT or whatever, you know, should you install Termonad and try it out? Well, that depends. Uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't bother trying Termonad unless you already have Haskell on the system. So if you have, of course, Xmonad on the system, you have Haskell. If you have Pandoc, that's a very popular program. If you have Pandoc on the system, that's Haskell, and you already have Haskell on your system. Shellcheck is another popular one. And of course, if you just play with Haskell, if you're a Haskell developer and already have the language on your system so you can learn how to program in Haskell, yeah, I absolutely install Termonad because, again, you can configure it in Haskell. It, it provides you some practice, and that's kind of why I installed it. I'm trying to learn a little more Haskell here lately since I've been doing a, a deeper dive into Xmonad here in the last couple of weeks. I've got to say, I've really been impressed with learning Haskell as far as the programming language. I think it it's really neat. It's such an interesting language. We may do more stuff on the channel as far as some of the ins and outs of learning Haskell. But yeah, Termonad, give it a try, guys. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Michael, Mitchell, Gabe, Papalo, Nate, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Libre, Quest, Omri, Paul, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this episode. I also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. Without these guys, this show wouldn't be possible. This channel wouldn't be possible because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, consider doing so. You'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys.